Hairstain, hairstain one, two, three.
Environmental Services Committee. Can I ask everyone to please mute their microphones at all times unless invited to speak by myself? For those of you who are physically in the council chamber this evening, can I please remind you that when speaking into your microphone, you need to wait until you see yourself on the screens so the live feed can pick up your comments. If you speak before your image is projected, those listening on the live feed or via Zoom will not hear anything you say. This is obviously particularly important in the case of a vote being required. Can I now ask ICT to please confirm that we have begun live streaming? Thumbs up. Good stuff. Thank you. Okay, members, agenda item one, as usual, is apologies. Are there any members have apologies to give? No. Well, attendance. First day of term. <laughs> Agenda item two is declarations of interest. I know we have quite a number of new members. Um, perhaps don't be too scared by that. Uh, if you if you see anything that you think conflicts with um, your own personal interest, you can make that declaration as we go through uh, the meeting. Um, so without any indication online or in the chamber, we'll move on to agenda item three, which is a business plan report. Um, it's a decision item, members, so we will go through, I'll get Jonathan to bring us through item 3.1, and at the end we'll have a decision to make. Um, so over to yourself, Jonathan. Thank you, Chair, and uh, good evening, members. Members uh, will be familiar in terms of the business plan process within the each of the departments. Uh, equally, members will be familiar this time of the year, we take through the business plans for 23-24 in relation to the Environmental Health Department and also the Environmental Services Department members will note within the detail of the report that there are some of the high level areas associated with some of the key actions for delivery during uh, this financial year. The detailed business plans can also be found in Appendix 1 and 2. Certainly uh, both uh, myself, Gillian, and also uh, Elizabeth will be here in relation to answering any of those questions. So certainly, Chair, happy to uh, present the report before members for uh, approval. Thank you, Chair. Okay, members. Um, thank you, Jonathan Alderman Moutry. Thank you, Chair. And uh, I wish you the very best in the year ahead as Chair of this committee. I'm sure you'll perform well. Uh, just in relation to the business plans, and specifically in environmental services, it's somewhat concerning that the targets that are green are only 35%. So really, two-thirds of the targets weren't achieved. Can I ask through you, the directors, you know, do we, what, what, what we intend to do to improve on that? Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Moudre. Is that, am I right in saying that's more uh, in 3.2, which is the information item linked to the, yeah, yeah, I thought so myself. Um, are you happy to go through this and then, yeah, good stuff. Okay, members, are there any questions relating to item 3.1 with the business plan? If there's nobody indicating, um, it is a, a decision item. So it is recommended that members approve the environmental health and environmental services departmental business plan contained within the appendices. I would need a proposer and a seconder, please. Proposed by Alderman Moutry. Seconded by Councillor McClellan, thank you. Okay, members all agreed. We're gonna move on to item 3.2, which is an item for information. Um, my particular style of doing chair for committees is that if you've read your papers and you've any questions linked to the item for information, we will ask for questions rather than actually bring the report in. Um, in this case, Alderman Moutry, you had previously indicated that you had a question relating to this. So um, members, if you have any other questions, you can indicate with your light rather than going through the report. Um, Alderman Moudry, do you want to come in and ask your question now relating to that? Thank you, Chair. Well, it was just as, as before, you know, it's concerning that the environmental services uh, targets are just, you know, 35.7% green and the vast majority are either amber or red, and what are we intending to do to try and improve this as we move forward? And I know it's a broad-based uh, department and there's a lot of different things, but really we need to see an improvement there. Thank you, Chair. Maybe if I could just come back to Alderman Moutry's uh, question, and he's quite right in relation to 
the uh, ambers and a number of the reds in terms of unable to progress to the target that was identified within the original business plan. Uh, so the, the process that we are adopting now in relation to this is that we're developing action plans associated with these remaining actions. They will be carried forward in relation to our action plan for 2023-24 within the department itself. Uh, there is also a program of work that members will be familiar with in relation to the transformation of environmental services. And again, some of these actions will be fundamental and built into that particular program of work. And in relation to that particular strand, we will be updating members uh, over the summer months with a view to a more detailed report in relation to progress, action plans, and outcomes associated with that particular piece of work to which a number of these items within the action plan currently relate to. But certainly, no, this uh, hasn't went unnoticed from a uh, senior management point of view, and we will be proactively uh, ensuring that these actions are closed out in a timely way. Thank you, Chair. Alderman Madre, are you content with that? Yeah, OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Flaherty? Thank you very much, Chair, um, and thanks for letting me in there. Much along the lines of Alderman Mutri, I, I really am quite concerned, that particularly the Reds, you know, it's not that we just go out looking for the Reds, but truthfully, I'm not surprised at what the Reds are. Um, the particular, I suppose, um, concern is that we're still sitting there looking you know, the dreadful figures when it comes to the transformation and harmonisation. I, I have to be honest, you know, and I have deep. I have a real concern about this department, um, and I have a real concern for our staff in that department. And another concern I have is honestly, um, I would hardly, in some instances, know who's who in these departments when we are going looking for some assistance, or when I particularly have staff coming to me looking for assistance. You know, so I think actually it would be it would be useful to know who actually um, is is in charge down in some of these places. I don't want to be bothering you all the time, Mr. Hayes, which I, I do on a regular basis, as you know. Um, I am, and I want to put on record, I am slightly concerned about some of our staff and the morale within those departments. Um, and if we can get this tackled, that might that might help because this this is we know from what happened last year what happens when this department is not in a good place. And, and I see, I, I have a concern when I look at this. So um, I, I want some of that addressed. And a wee useful context for, would be actually very helpful as to who is, where, and when. Thank you, Chair. And again, thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Again, absolutely concerns uh, noted. Uh, there is, for, you know, there is good progress in terms of engagement with staff at the depot. So management are proactively engaging with, with staff on site. Comments are noted in relation to progress associated with the transformation program of work, and, and certainly we will update members uh, over the summer months in, in relation to that, but be certainly be rest assured uh, management is proactively engaging with staff uh, across the depots in relation to that particular piece of work, but certainly a, pro, uh, a contact list uh, will circulate out to all, all members on, on committee. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, Councillor McClelland. Yeah, Chair, thanks for letting me in. And, and I guess it's much along the same, along, uh, along the, the same issue as my two colleagues who spoke previously. But I, I, I suppose specifically, it's maybe to help me, me understand Right on the implement service improvement plan, it's it is essentially red in quarter one, red in quarter two, amber in quarter three, and then another red in quarter four. I suppose help me understand how that has been arrived at, you know, uh, because after all, it is an action plan that was agreed in twenty in 21 to 22 and so on. So essentially what improved in quarter three, you know, it's, it's just help our, around how those are all arrived at. Thanks, Chair Jonathan. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bertrand. Just in relation to your query, I suppose during that quarter three period, we were progressing as planned. 
Uh, there was a period of industrial action during quarter three, which had an impact then in terms of progression in relation to quarter four. Uh, but that is something that we have realigned now in relation to our new targets associated with the delivery of the programme of work. Sure. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Councillor McClelland. Um, Councillor Barry, is it Alderman Barry? Or, uh, Alder, Alderman Barry, I wouldn't want to get that wrong in the first name. <laughs> okay. Not lose any sleep. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair, and, and thanks to Jonathan and team. Uh, once again, it's mirroring what other colleagues have said, especially in relation to the transformation plan, uh, and it mentions in relation to improve the performance and consistency of services across the borough. That's the problem. There is no consistency. And uh, there's too many reds, too many oranges, and not enough greens here uh, in relation to this. And, you know, we've had working groups after working groups in, in relation to uh, the whole transformation, and they've come and gone. We had one guy in when we sat over one night in the, uh, in the leisure centre opposite going through fleet management and going through street cleansing and what was going to happen and what wasn't going to happen. And then all of a sudden it died. And we as uh, council councillors are constantly getting it in the neck uh, in relation to street cleansing or the lack of and the whole consistency across the borough, which there is none. So I think what we would like to see would jump pretty quick from red to green and like to know exactly how that is going to be delivered because, you know, in areas which I've even raised with Jonathan today, you know, one of the men's off on holiday and then that particular town doesn't get a litter pick that week because one man is off out of a large organisation. There's something seriously wrong with management that I think we need to get a grasp of because uh, it's something that's happening too often. And with the greatest respects, the way it's going, you would like to think that when things like this happen, there are people there to manage some one particular fill in that post for the next week or the next two weeks, instead of us as councillors trying to manage it, which is not our job. So I would like to sort of know how we're going to get on top of this. We're being told constantly, we're going there, this guy that has been brought in without naming him is going to do wonderful things. Is he going to do wonderful things? And are we going to see changes pretty soon? Because I'm sick looking at litter and, and weeds growing on our town centres and nothing happening. And it's the rate payer that's losing out because they're paying the rates and they're not seeing a delivery of service, but there still seems to be the same number of staff. So what's going on? That's, I just want to ask that basic question. Thank you, uh, Alderman Barry. And as I said, I, I suppose in terms of the work plan that we have in progress, we do want to sit back down with members of the working group again over the summer months and go through the detailed program uh, prior to the estimate staff process in September to go through some of these issues that members have identified tonight, but also equally they're, they're in the uh, the business plan tonight. So again, I will reiterate the, the fact that we will sit down with members and go through this uh, with members in some detail. Uh, members' concerns uh, have been noted uh, and will be addressed by officers in due course. Thank you, Jonathan, and I think most members would agree with the comments made in terms of frustration around cleanliness and the, you know, certainly in respect to new members. We have been talking about these issues over a long number of time, a long number of months and uh, years, but what we do have is a very good idea of our baseline and these reports give us an idea where we're at and, and the system of green, amber and red, it does allow us to see where we're at and the key thing now is to agree on how we get to better results. So there's, there's no doubt that you know, we're going to all have to work together to try and achieve that. Um, Councillor Greenfield, you wanted to come in? Yeah, thank you, Chair, and wish you well in your year and your deputy beside you there. But I suppose it's just on the same thing as you're saying yourself. There is certainly, we do want to see these reports, good, bad, or indifferent. That's what we all wanted for a long time. We want to see them improve and quickly. But I think in any organisation, we, we've all agreed the, the strategy going forward. I think we have to keep with it and keep the support to our officers and our members of staff moving forward that, you know, at management as well, because it is frustrating for us all whenever we don't see it right, but maybe we don't always understand what all is going on. And when we're in the middle of a lot of change, I think we just need to be mindful of that. But so, again, it's back to what we've said on many occasions, it's keeping communication between members and, you know, the, the top table there and yourself, John, that we know whenever there's issues, uh, so we're not all individually contacting you all the time, but I, you know, we want you to keep pushing ahead with the, the strategy we're on and hopefully we will see improvements through. And, uh, but certainly it's important that we do keep getting these reports as opposed to not seeing where we're at, whether it's good, bad or indifferent, we need to get them so we can keep a focus on it. So 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Greenfield. Okay, members, uh, no more late. So that was an item for information. Um, we're now going to move on to agenda item four, which is the environmental health report. I'm going to hand over to Elizabeth for item 4.1. Is that right? Yeah. Good evening, members. Um, thank you, Chair. So the paper that uh, is being outlined this evening follows on from a report in March in relation to new powers available to Council under the Waste and Contaminated Land legislation. The report in March outlined the changes introduced since January and set out that Council now has new discre uh, discretionary powers and a joint responsibility with the Northern Ireland Environment Agency for certain matters, including the offence of fly tipping. Whilst there are a number of new discretionary powers, uh, we are seeking this evening to proceed and set a fee uh, where a fixed penalty notice is to be issued for a fly tipping offence. A fixed penalty amount of £400 is recommended, which is the maximum currently permitted. Members will be aware that when a fixed, fixed penalty notice is served, the payment of which discharges the liability for prosecution and the penalty amount must be fixed by the council according to the legislation at between 100 and 400 pounds. Relevant to note and for members' consideration this evening is that the offence of fly tipping is very different to the offence of littering. It involves uh, an accumulated quantity of waste, some degree of premeditation by the offender in transportation, handling and dumping of the material. And obviously there are significant costs in cleanup as well as the unsightly nature of it. Setting the fixed penalty at the maximum amount of £400 would certainly support Council's ongoing zero tolerance to environmental crime and increase the deterrent effect of fly tipping. And it's worth noting that Council can retain the right not to actually serve the fixed penalty for a suspected offence and instead could seek prosecution in the Magistrates Court, for example, where the offence is particularly serious or aggravated. Um, it is worth noting as well that the council must ring fence any receipts from fly tipping for use in waste and for, uh, enforcement and education. So the recommendation before members tonight that they can reflect and if they consider appropriate set the fixed penalty amount at £400 as the maximum permitted for the offence of fly tipping with the commencement date of the 1st of August 2023. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, Councillor O'Dowd. Thank you, Chair. As much as we welcome the increased £400, what measures are being met to the areas that is well known for fly tipping? What is being done in the areas to stop it, basically? Thank you, Councillor Dowd. So there's a range of options that, that we use, and a lot of this starts with, with education. And then obviously there is the enforcement aspect to it as well. What we really rely on is intelligence and really good intelligence. And when we're getting that good intelligence, there's a team of officers will go out and will try to ascertain the offender details and then follow through on that. But I would just say that the key thing is good intelligence in these matters. And then if we get information or complaints, there's patrols carried out by wardens to try and ascertain the offenders. But unfortunately, we often don't get that information. And they are in areas where we can't patrol all the time. But good intelligence is key. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Councillor, are you happy with that response? Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Uh, definitely know where you're coming from, but there is areas within the Lurgan area, and I'm sure the rest can confirm it, that they're being reported constantly. There's one area in particular, constantly, every week it's being reported. But I'm going to thank the council for picking up the, the stuff that was left. But nothing's being done. There's no prosecutions. Is, is there a list or can we find out how many people has actually been prosecuted for flight tipping?
Yeah, I, I would refer back to the earlier part of the report, Councillor uh, O'Dowd, and fly tipping has just come into uh, Council's remit um, from January, and previous to that, it was the Northern Ireland Environment Agency. So up until that, we've been prioritising around general littering rather than fly tipping, um, and the paper in March brought those new powers that we have forward. But with regard to, to dumping in certain areas, happy to pick that information up from you directly where you have concerns, and certainly I, I pick that up with you um, directly. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, you're happy enough, Councillor O'Dowd, to pick this up, yeah. Um, I think it might be useful that, especially for new, new members in terms of reporting, that there's even a bit of a circular or an email given out to remind people that if you know if you're approached about flight tipping, this is the correct number to, to call because it obviously is a big issue in some areas in particular. Um, Councillor Evans. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to ask about um regarding bulk lifts, because most of the flight tipping appears to be large items. Has bulk lifts um, returned? And if so, how often is that happening? And how many items a year can each constituent get lifted? Because it seems to be a massive area in certain areas of Portadown and Craig Avon, where it's large items being dumped. And I'm just wondering, is that happening because people can only get one or two lifts done a year? And can we get a copy of maybe a list of when those routes take place and how often? Thank you. Councillor Evans, thank you for the question. Um, we'll find out more about the bulky because we know it had been suspended and uh, I'll get the most up-to-date uh, position for you. Uh, in terms of the, the flight tipping of those items, it has been our experience through environmental health and through street cleansing that where you're seeing those items, you know, perhaps in highly dense, densely populated areas in our towns, um, a lot of that is coming not necessarily from the fact that people couldn't access a bulky lift. It's the fact that perhaps you get high turnover of, or of tenanted properties and landlord and tenants. And so they don't even wait to log the bulky lift. They just, they turn over the property so quickly and they put, set out the mattress and they set out the bed and they set out all of that. And that ties back into Councillor O'Dowd's issue where we then do patrol and we do have some plans in place for those type of properties. And we do run some programs there with through the environmental wardens, through the recycling inspectors, and through uh, across a number of the different departments. So, um, absolutely, you're, we can find out some information about the bulky and supply that to you. But it's not always that reason that causes the furniture uh, in the areas that you would describe. Thank you, Gillian. Um, Councillor Evans, are you happy with that response? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Forgive me if there's a delay here. I'm just going to bring in Councillor Ferguson on Zoom, if possible, please. Thank, Thank you, Chair, and good evening, members. Um, I just have a question for officials around what evidence they may have that an increase in price or a, a maximum price would alter behaviour for fly tipping. Um, do you think that it acts as a deterrent? And have they any benchmarks um, or evidence on that? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Um, my response to that is really because of the nature of a fly tip, and as I outlined in the report, um, that it is that premeditated uh, type of behaviour. And certainly fly tipping isn't something that um, sticks to council boundaries. Mm -hmm. And having consulted with regional colleagues, there is the approach um, of recommending the, the maximum. Obviously, this is down to councillor's discretion, mm -hmm. and I'm happy certainly to, to look at the different options uh, the officer recommendation is four hundred pounds, uh, uh, but it's very much members' decision on this. Thank you, Elizabeth, uh, Councillor Ferguson, are you indicating to come back in, or are you happy? Uh, Chair, happy, but with one final comment that it just might be a wider problem, and I think some of my colleagues in chamber tonight 
have alluded to that, that it might not just be price only, and that maybe a, a more holistic approach to this solution might be a, a consideration. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Alderman Rankin. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll just um, to clear up in my own mind, um, anyone who, who dumps items in fields and private land, is it still not in our environment, environment agency you go to? Because in, in where I live and where like Councillor McClellan lives, the problem is people dumping items over hedges into people's fields. It's not on streets. It's, it's mainly on private land and fields. So the, is the advice still to go to NIEA for those private landowners? It's just to clear that one up in my own mind and my fellow members. The new legislation, Alderman Rankin came in at the beginning of the year and we're still working through some of the powers within that. Um, and I, certainly we're working on that regionally so that we have a joined up approach regionally on it. So it would be the intention to bring back further papers towards the end of the year on that wider scope of powers that have been introduced to this legislation. It did, and the, the paper that we took back in March, it took us quite by surprise when the, the, the protocol that was agreed with NIEA was suddenly brought into legislation and council were given those powers. So as I, I hope to bring something back towards um, the latter part of the summer on the, on the wider aspect of fly tipping and the role of NIEA and the role of council. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. I think we're we're finding our way through this, and it is it is going to be important in terms of giving information. So, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Councillor McElrath. Thank you, Chair. Um, and can I just wish you and your deputy a good year uh, at the top table uh, and all the best. Um, Elizabeth, uh, you are probably on the firing line a wee bit here tonight, but uh, Alderman Rankin asked the question probably that I was going to start with and just about the legislation and so on, because members here, and some of the new members and, and others that have been here for a while will know we face many problems in relation to fly tipping. Some of it's the 200 tyres dumped over the hedge somewhere in no man's land. Um, and then my particular issue for most of my week is is fly tipping in the Anna area, which which you know have been going on about for a long time, and we know we know the issues. It's just how to try and resolve them. And I think it was Councillor O'Dowd, maybe it's the same issue across in Lurgan, and um, I know Gillian, you have alluded to high turnover um, of rental accommodation and so on, a major problem. But um, I think. It is something we have to keep working on, and I do appreciate the staff who go in probably three, four times a week and, and, and lift that stuff. I suppose what frustrates me somewhat is if someone, uh, maybe not, well, we could say deliberately, but not meaning to dump stuff, but maybe leave stuff at some of our main sites and, and be picked up doing that, immediately get, get issued with a fine, and yet if they went 500 yards up, up the road and threw it at Queen Street garages, there wouldn't be an issue, you know, and it, I don't mean that as a criticism, but it's just sometimes it feels a wee bit hard done by for some of my constituents, but um, I suppose we have to keep working at it. I am very happy to propose the maximum fine, because if someone is dumping to the extent that this legislation covers, then £400 barely even scratches the surface. So I'm happy to propose it. One thing I, I want to say, Chair, maybe just to digress slightly, if you'll allow me, I noticed that Causeway Coast and Glens have introduced a tyre amnesty scheme along with the um, NIEA have led on it, along with the Ulster Farmers Union and the Council, and um, farmers are allowed to dispose of 50 tyres at an amenity site, uh, selected amenity sites for, I think it's two and a half months, and I was wondering, is that something, I mean, we're thinking about bonfire season and all, and, um, you know, keeping tires away from bonfires and stuff like that, there's very much a priority for us. And I was just wondering, is that something that we could perhaps look at? 
Um, I, I certainly has gained a wee bit of publicity in the last week or 10 days. And uh, I know tire dumping, particularly in the Birches area, is one of the major problems that we face and have faced as a council. So, you know, uh, perhaps that might be a way of reducing some some of the tire uh, dumping. It may not. I don't know. But it's it seems a very sensible proposal that has been brought through by NAA and supported by the UFU and council up on the north coast. So perhaps that could be put forward maybe as a suggestion, maybe something officers could look at. I'm happy to propose, Chair, the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor McElrath, and thank you for the proposal. Would remain members that that is the actual item that we're talking about here tonight. That is a, a serious uh, frustration for all of us in terms of fly tipping. Um, I think we're all agreed that the maximum fine for somebody who is caught is appropriate. Well, I would I would hope so. Um, so we do need someone else to second this. Uh, but Councillor Kane, you've indicated you wish to speak as well. And then we'll draw it to a close. Yes. Um, all right. I'm only new to this, but uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, Elizabeth, just one question. If if somebody fly tips uh, asbestos, it's going to cost about two to three thousand pounds to legally get rid of. Are they only receiving a four hundred pound fine or are they going to be charged with the with getting rid of asbestos as well? Thank you. Thanks, Councillor O'Kane. Um the paper outlined that there is that option rather than just serving the fixed penalty for something like that and with the risk involved, the council would have the option to take that before a magistrate's court. And at that stage, it would be hoped that there would be a more significant uh, penalty imposed by the magistrate for something like that. The magistrate may then impose the additional costs that are incurred by council as part of that cleanup. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. Happy enough with Councillor Kane, yeah. Uh, Councillor Greenfield. Happy to second, Chair. Yeah, thank you. The old hands showing their skills tonight. They know really what's needed. Okay, thank you, members. So all agreed, proposed and seconded. Yep. Okay, members, we are going to move on to item 4.2, which is a service level agreement with Department of Justice and District Councils. It's fairly straightforward. Elizabeth, I think that's yourself again, isn't it? Thank you, Chair. Uh, members, a service level agreement uh, currently exists between the Department of Justice and the Council. It sets out arrangement for Council officers who are then warranted by the Department. Uh, these officers carry out inspections of premises, storing items such as fireworks or airbag components, um, and they also set conditions and fireworks displays under the legislation as outlined in the paper. Uh, the service level agreement is an ongoing arrangement, it's an existing arrangement, and the current amended version just really updates the existing arrangements that we have that were dated back in 2016. It is really to update and to reflect the costs that are payable to Council. Other details in the existing SLA remain unchanged, and uh, it is to note that the work is carried out on a cost recovery basis. So the recommendation to members tonight is that they approve the signing of the amended service level agreement between the Department of Justice and Council. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. It is a fairly straightforward um, recommendation in front of your members. Can I have a proposer and seconder if there are no questions? Proposed by Councillor McElrath, seconded by Councillor O'Dowd. Thank you, members. Um, okay, item 4.3 is an information item on dog killing. So unless anybody indicates to ask questions or speak, we shall move on. Okay, um, okay members, agenda item five. Environmental Services Report, and um, we have one decision item on the provision of memorials. Um, so I am going to hand over to, is it yourself? Yeah, okay, over to Gillian. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, members. I'll bring this um, report forward in the absence of, of my patients. Um, members, you're asked to consider the report and agree to supporting a proposed tree dedication and plaque uh, unveiling events across the borough. Um, this came up at the April meeting uh, and officers were asked to pull together some overview on memorials within the borough to those who died during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I understand uh, that members were contacted by an organisation called Memory Stones of Love, um, set up by bereaved families, and they um, had made a request that council 
uh, would place benches and trees in various public parks commemorating those who died. Um, and members, you will recall that actually the council itself in December 2021 um, had passed a proposal to plant a tree in memory of each of the 362 victims at the time. Uh, and these were to be planted along the towpath. There's a, an update there, members, on the planting of those trees. So in taking these two items together, members, we've brought this report to you. Um, we are proposing that there should be an official dedication with a plaque unveiling event um, that could be organised for the autumn time. And then in order to um, acknowledge the request from the group Memory Stones of Love for the placing of benches, it is suggested that commemorative plaques could be placed on existing benches um, at our civic buildings and one of the parks, one in each uh, location across the borough, and that this would all be um, rolled together uh, and this commemoration um, take place at the one time later on in the year. And you have some information members on those proposed locations and on the budgetary implications, uh, which can be met from within existing budgets. So members, the recommendation is that you would agree to support the proposed dedication and plaque unveiling events incorporating um, the, uh, the, the request from Memory Stones of Love. Thank you, members. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Gillian. Um, it was quite an emotive issue, obviously, and there was so many people lost during the, the pandemic. So really, members, as outlined for the recommendation, we we'll just need either comments or a proposer and a seconder, if possible. Proposed by the Vice Chair. Councillor Flaherty, do you wish to speak? Okay. Thank you, Chair. I'm more than happy to second this, Chair, just to be clear and have that on the record for you. But can I just make one remark? Can you be a wee bit more specific about timelines? You'll forgive me for being a bit cynical when it comes to timelines for the like of these things being done, um, given I'm still waiting on a proposal from a number of years ago. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Um, happy enough for that. Okay, so we have a proposer and seconder. Comments noted. All agreed? Okay, members, uh, the next few items are information items, 5.2, 5.3. So unless anybody has any questions to indicate, Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's just on item 5.2, on the update on provision of water refill points. I appreciate that we have made those efforts um, to promote the outside taps um, and the reusable water bottles. Um, but would officers look into a possible pilot scheme of this? I know the costs were outlined, but I think we, it's not something we can push off the table yet. Um, and if that needs to be an official proposal, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Councillor Johnson. So members uh, will see within the report there, there's costs associated with, with those uh, those refill points. Uh, if members would be content, uh, officers would try to see, could we seek additional outside external funding in the first instance to see could we actually fund some of these uh, potential, uh, and then of course we could do it as a potential pilot thereafter, but certainly just given the cost and, and management of budgets currently, Happy to consider it as part of the wider estimate setting process in the autumn, but certainly in the meantime, if members are content officers to seek funding opportunities for, for a potential pilot, then I would I would seek members approval in that regard. Councillor Johnson, are you happy with that? So yeah, we can withdraw that proposal. Okay, thank you. Councillor McClellan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Thanks for letting me in. And yeah, it's just on on item five point three, the Woodland Trust Emergency Tree Fund. And I guess it's just a fairly brief comment. It's just to commend any and all work around this. And um, certainly, it it is very necessary. It is a good news story. And just I would wish it all the very best as the proposal is worked up. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor McLeod. I would fully agree with those remarks. Uh, Councillor Flaherty, did you want to speak maybe on 5.2? Yes, Chair. 
Thank you very much. And if you'll just allow me, Jonathan, I just want to roll a wee bit, roll back a wee teeny bit on this issue of the water refill points. Was that not originally a proposal? Or was it a notion? Maybe somebody can correct me here. Was it not a notice of motion or a proposal by Thomas O'Hanlon that brought this originally to this chamber quite some time ago? Um, I do recall him, him. I do. I haven't just got it right in front of me here at the minute because I've only got one device on the go at the minute. But this worries me that these things get get passed through committees. Which this was passed through committee that these refill site definitely was. Somebody. Do a Google there quick. That this was passed through in this committee quite some time ago. With the and this is not the first time these things happen. This was passed, and the understanding was that it would be rolled out. And now we come to this stage where we we should have been told, "Sorry, no can do." Now, I, so I want this. I really would like this just looked at again, and um, because I know exactly what where these taps are, you see them in places. People don't even know, I don't think, where they can get a bottle unless they bring one themselves. I, I don't really I don't really think it's been publicised that well and has been raised by um, a colleague in the SD, in, or oh, Councillor O'Hanlon, sorry, in SDLP, most certainly has raised this. So I really do want this looked at again, never mind new proposals or new pilots or whatever. This was already a decision of council at some point. Thank you, Councillor Flaherty. I'm just going to bring Gillian in on that. Thank you, Councillor Fly. Um, in my understanding of this, not being over all of the detail, but um, we do absolutely understand that this was brought forward through the committee uh, to be explored, and uh, Councillor O'Hanlon later brought it back again to us in, in more recent months. Um, in the exploring of this, you will see in the beginning of the report that we were part of the, the campaign with Northern Ireland Water, and that was around you know promoting bottles and, and handing those out, which we did do. And you can see there where there have been an application for funding. And in the intervening years, we weren't able to access that funding. And the cost of these units has, has significantly increased. Um, and you can see there the cost for that. And that, you know, regrettably for all of us is, is very challenging um, as we, we deal with uh, more restricted budgets. Um, I think the, the issue around this is where officers have designed and installed signage around the facilities in order to promote what's available there. And I know that members may not um, see that in line with what it was they had thought would happen and um, what they had hoped would happen, but officers have tried to design signage uh, in order to promote where water is available at our facilities without um, putting in a particular unit and uh, the issues, as you see there, really around who maintains the unit, where are they cited, and the cost and the cost of any potential damage. And uh, it really has become prohibitive within our current budgets. Um, but certainly, as Jonathan has indicated, these are things that if members want to bring forward, we can bring forward. They can be brought forward into the estimates process, which will begin in later on in the year. Um, but for now, members, um, my understanding is that officers have um, promoted where the sites are and will continue to promote where those sites are as we work within the restricted um, budgets which we have available to us. Thank you, Gillian, and thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Um, there's no doubt even the, the comments from Councillor Johnson around um, rolling this out and how important it was and all the rest. I think obviously a key component is the costing. Um, so I would think this isn't the line through the issue, but if officers are, as indicated, going to look at potential um, funding, external funding. It would certainly help make the decision a little bit easier in the chamber. Um, okay, members, there's no no more lights indicated to speak on this matter. So we're now going to move into confidential business. So bear with me while I read this out. Members and online viewers, in accordance with Schedule 6 of the Local Government Act, we will now be moving into a confidential session of this council. This means that we'll be turning off the public feed of the meeting. This will be returned when the meeting is restarted. Can I ask the ICT officers to please turn off the feed and confirm with
That's right. Nice. That's 100% night. Right. Great, thank you. Okay, members, and we're back in open session. And can I just have a proposal and second to set the recommendations in there? Yeah, thanks for being here. That's 100% night. Okay, members, thank you for your attendance and teaching the mayor's work through the agenda. And to all members who are new, welcome to be our first one. First of many. Um, okay, and to officers as well for all the work I'm doing into the report tonight. Thanks. So, see you at the moment, everybody. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I said this is six and seven, done.